All right, as the uh, bells toll at uh, Huntley Dodge, it is 8 p.m. And let the rec ref record reflect. We have reconvened with all members present. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Mary, you may have been muted for the, the Pledge of Allegiance. All right, sorry about that. I uh, somehow got muted and then could not unmute myself. So I appreciate everyone picking up on the uh, pledge for me. Nobody did, it was complete silence. What was it, uh... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> let's, um, if it was complete silence, let's uh, let us uh, do this properly. So we uh, hold that back. In. All right, please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag, to the flag United of the United States, States of America and, and to the Republic, Republic which is which stands one nation, nation under, under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and, and justice, justice for all. Thank you, and I'm sorry about uh, all that. Um, I want to take a, a moment of silence for uh, a few people we have lost since our last meeting. Anne Travone Palma, a lifelong Madison resident, passed away in her sleep peacefully at her home on Friday, March 12th. She was 102. She may, may very well represent the longest residency in Madison. As Anne was born in Madison, December 7th, 1918, the late Philip and Rose Servone. She grew up on North Street in a family of 10 children and remained on North Street throughout her life. And that's where she was this year. She's a graduate of Madison High School. She worked as a secretary for Pat Sedano's law firm before becoming a realtor for Esposito Realty in Madison and also dedicated her life to helping others in any way she could. She did extensive work for Italian immigrants completing their immigration paperwork, finding them affordable real estate, and even helping them to learn English. She also did income taxes for lower income families before retiring at the age of 70. In her retirement, Anne's focus shifted to taking care of her home and her older brother, Frank. Anne was a lifelong parishioner of St. Vincent Martyr Church and was a loving mother to her son, Charles, and a kind, caring friend of all who knew and loved her. Her spirit and presence will be deeply missed. In addition to her parents, Anne is predeceased by her brothers, Frank, Joseph, John, James, and Salvador, and her sisters, Antoinette, Raphael, Teresa, and Yolanda. She's survived by her son, Charles. We also remember Barbara Leverance, a lifelong Madison resident, a longtime Madison resident, not lifelong, passed away at her home on Wednesday, March 17th. She was 77. She was born in Madison, Morristown, April 3rd, 1943, the late William and Josephine McLaughlin. And Barbara took a job at Woolworths in Madison, but her true joy was caring for her beloved family. She was a lifelong parishioner of St. Vincent Martyr Church. And Barbara enjoyed cooking, especially Italian food, driving around to go shopping. She also loved to go down to shore to LBI. In addition to her parents, she was predeceased by her brothers, Peter, William, and James. She's survived by her sons, Carl and Christopher, and three grandchildren, one great-grandchild. Also want to remember Michael Rapaska, who died on March 4th at his home in Mendham at the age of 92. While never living in Madison, Mike left his mark as a 56-year member of the Madison Rotary Club. He served in the U.S. Navy following World War II on the USS Lennon and the USS Robinson and served in the United States Naval Reserve. After starting off as a teacher, he became a principal of the Ridgedale Middle School in Florham Park in July 1960 and retired from Florham Park School District after 30 years in June 1990. 
And if, as I can tell, for middle school, that's a long uh, time as a principal. Uh, during the time at, at Ridgedale, he could often be found enjoying lunch at the counter at CJ's Deli. Madison was, uh, Michael was a, an active and passionate member of the Madison Rotary Club. And as Madison Rotary wrote, Madison Rotary not only lost a legend with the passing of Mike, he was a Rotarian for 56 years, provided leadership to numerous programs that have positively affected the lives of thousands and thousands of people. If there was a Rotary event, Mike would be there. Mike is survived by his wife of 67 years, Claire, his brother, Victor, his six children, his 14 grand grandchildren, and 10 great-grandchildren. He was predeceased by his uh, sister, Muriel. Let us take a moment to remember Ann Palmer, Barbara Leverance, Mike Rabaska. Let us also remember the eight who were murdered in the Atlantic area, deaths that have touched our Asian American community. Let us now pass our thoughts on the families and friends they leave behind. Thank you. There are uh, no minutes for approval. We'll be catching up with that in the next, next meeting. So uh, let me get to my uh, message here. First of all, I want to welcome Bob Landergan back. It's great to have you back here. And um, good to see that you have on your well on your road to recovery. And um, so sorry about the slip and as you were trying to serve Madison as you've put in so many hours to help our community. Thank you, Mayor. It's good to be back. And as uh, we know, spring arrived this weekend and it was a beautiful spring weekend. And a true sign that spring has arrived is the fact that yesterday I retrieved the first foul ball of the season from my driveway. So we are here. <laughs> um, but, uh, I want to take a moment to put this point in time in perspective. So I pulled up my comments from our council meeting almost a year ago, March 30th, 2020. And here is some of what I said. Welcome to our first virtual council meeting. Our last meeting was on March 9th, only three weeks on the calendar, but years in respect to how our lives have changed. Originally this, move, this meeting was moved from last Monday so the council members could attend the Taste of Madison. Of course, that did not happen, though many of us enjoyed our own version of a virtual taste. This extra week allowed us to put all re resources towards handling the initial days of a crisis while also putting this platform in place. And here we are a year later, still we're using this platform. We are testing our systems, but that doesn't mean it will not be without bumps as we saw during the uh, pledge today. And I went on to say, I want to thank all Madison residents for taking COVID-19 so seriously. While we've had a few issues of non-compliance, it appears that everyone is now following social distancing protocols. We now know that this will be our world for at least the next month. And that was wishful thinking at that time. We all know the saying, every cloud has a silver lining. And this is probably the darkest cloud we've ever seen, but it also has a silver lining. It has brought families closer together literally as we are spending so much time in our homes, but also during the time spent getting fresh air and exercise while walking together as a family. In this day and age of screen and not quality time, just maybe the pandemic can produce a positive result by moving families more closely together. Uh, I then went on to discuss some of the programs we rolled out to the community, including this statement of, from the generosity of our residents, the fiscal strength of Madison, Mad Madison is in position not only to weather the storm, but to pave the road to recovery. You have our commitment that we are on your side, not only today, but in the coming weeks and months and year with an eye to future years so we can stay Madison strong. So that's where we were almost a full year ago and we are still working there. So let's keep in mind, we are not out of this yet. In fact, a new string of new variants has slowed down the reopening process as the governor announced today. But there is a light at the end, end of the tunnel. So let us, let, let us not stop our effort to protect ourselves and those around us. A couple of recent Madison hotspots have reminded us that COVID can spread very quickly. So keep wearing your masks when you're around others. Follow the guidelines that limit gatherings for indoor and outdoor activities. And when you can get the vaccine, do it. 
spring is an annual rebirth and a, re and a reminder that after the cold of winter comes the life of spring and summer. So we will get to this finish line. And shifting gears a little bit, I want to share a Facebook post from Eugene Huang, who had gone into cardiac arrest at the tennis uh, courts at the high school and was revived by a police department. And this is what uh, Eugene uh, posted. I was there, but I have no recollection of the events. What I do remember is officers Clancy and Menace coming to my house a few weeks later to check on me. There was genuine, genuine happiness in their faces, even through their masks, that I was doing well as I am. The comment I remember from, from that visit as they met my seven 11 year old kids and a wife was the effect of, this is what it's all about. In the moment, you're just trying to save a life, but there's so much involved in that. For my family, my friends, and of course for me, thank you. So Eugene, thank you for sharing that very special message. And um, you may have also seen posted today that uh, Chief Darren Dachison just announced his retirement from the Madison Police Department. He became chief during my first year as mayor and over the past years, 10 years, has provided great leadership to our department. His commitment to community policing has made our department one for all the residents in Madison. And I especially appreciate his participation in so many uh, community events, especially over the past year as we dealt with so much that is going on, the, going on in the world around us. And lastly, as we close out Women's History Month, month I want to recognize four Madison women. First, Connie Stober, as the first woman to hold any elected office. She had to work harder than any candidate to get elected and then serve Madison for two terms. Betty Bumgartner, the first woman to serve as mayor. Her dedication to our downtown created the DDC and of course, Bottle Hill Day. And then two, two recent council members, Carmela Vitale, who stepped down after 18 years, and Ostry Belly, who just announced that after 21 years, this is her last one. I haven't checked the records, but if Carmela and Ostry aren't the longest serving members of our council in the history of Madison, they are certainly among the top. But it is not longevity, but their dedication that has made Madison a better place. So let us wrap up Women's History Month by recognizing four great women who worked so hard for the residents of Madison. And with that, we will uh, shift to uh, reports from committees, public safety, Council President Byrne. Thank you, Mayor. From the fire department, the fire department has begun training as a group again, uh, again, following CDC guidelines for gatherings. Chief DeRosa has assembled a group of volunteers to look at increasing the recruitment and retention of volunteer firefighters. The committee will look at neighboring communities practices for ideas on identifying and recruiting volunteer firefighters. And we will begin the process of hiring an additional firefighter to replace a retiring member of the department tonight. The New Jersey Forest Fire Service will be conducting a prescribed burn tomorrow, March 23rd at the MRC complex. We have planned this event back in late fall and tomorrow is finally the day. Madison and Florham Park Fire Departments will be standing by at the MRC during the burn. The burn is scheduled to begin around 10 a.m. and conclude around noon. Notifications have gone out and more will be made tomorrow. From the police department, Police Chief Datchison asked me to read the following letter. Dear Madison, it is with mixed emotions that I write this letter to inform you about my pending retirement on April 26th. I sincerely want to thank you for the distinct honor of serving this special community for three decades. 30 years ago, Madison Borough gave a young man a chance to pursue his lifelong dream of becoming a police officer and serving in his family tradition of law enforcement, and I hope I have not disappointed you. During my career, I have worked alongside some very special officers who worked tirelessly to make this community a safe place to live and work. Please support these outstanding officers no matter what the national temperature is towards law enforcement. I would also be remiss if I didn't thank the president and past majors, council members and administration who've supported our department and myself over the years. I would also like to thank the Madison Fire Department and Madison Ambulance Corps who gave so much for the sake of others. Over the past 30 years, I have witnessed the full circle of life during my duties and have seen the best and worst society has to offer. I have made many friends in this community along this wonderful journey. And although I will no longer be your chief of police I will always be available to help this town and my department in any way I can. Although my time in the Madison police uniform is coming to a close, 
I will always be a medicine police officer at heart. I once again, thank you for the fond memories. And although I don't know what the next phase of my life will bring, I will always cherish my time serving you and commanding the best men and women in law enforcement that I have ever known. And that's from Chief Darren Jetson. And finally, from the Museum of Music, from the Museum of Early Trades and Crafts, on Monday, March 15th, Mayor Conley, Councilwoman Bailey, and I had the honor to attend the awarding of a New Jersey Historic Trust grant in the amount of $50,000 presented to the Museum of Early Trades and Crafts by Lieutenant Governor Sheila Oliver. The grant was matched by the New Jersey Historical Commission and the Madison Open Space Recreation and Historic Preservation Trust. The work being funded creates a feasibility study and construction documents for the construction of a state-of-the-art viewable collection storage facility in the historic James, Bil historic James Library building in Madison. The project will address the following strategic goals of the museum. It will properly house and conserve the entire collection in one location, ensure the construction complements the historic building, improve the building's environment through upgraded mechanical, electrical, plumbing, fire suppression, temperature, and humidity controls, address any remaining water mitigation, and provide greater public access to the collection through effective rehousing and digitalization. And that's my report. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. And now uh, Finance Borough Clerk, Ms. Bailey. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you for your kind words. That was quite a surprise. Um, first, from the clerk's office, um, in, in anticipation of the June 8th primary, the filing deadline for nomination petitions for county committee member as well as municipal office is 4 p.m. April 5th, 2021. The forms are available in the borough clerk's office or online at the Morris County Clerk's website. Voter registration forms as well as mail-in uh, ballot applications are also available in the borough clerk's office or online at morriselections.org. The polls will be open for in-person voting on June 8th. Residents that wish to vote by mail may do so by applying for a mail-in ballot before June 1st. And I'll wait for my comments when we discuss the budget. Okay, thank you. Thank you, and Public Works and Engineering, Mr. Hoover. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, from Public Works, roadway barricades have been cleaned and will be reinstalled in the commercial district starting tomorrow to allow expanded outside dining opportunities in a safe environment. DPW is coordinating placement of the barricades with the Police Traffic Safety Unit. All sidewalk benches have been reconditioned and will be reinstalled starting tomorrow. The new street sweeper has arrived. Staff has been trained and the vehicle is now operational. The hours at the new recycling center have been expanded. New hours are Tuesday and Friday from 8 a.m. to noon and Saturday from 8 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. A dedicated pothole crew has been working full-time to repair the damage to borough roads from a severe winter weather season. To report a pothole, go to rosenet.org slash 1297 slash C click fix. Okay, for uh, engineering department, the contract agreement for Hartley Dodge Memorial Plaza restoration has been sent to the general contractor Merrill and Garaguso of Swedesboro, New Jersey and a pre-construction meeting is being arranged this week. The intent of the contract is to break ground in April and continue working through the summer. Plans, specifications, and bid documents were advertised for Anthony Drive and Wayne Boulevard. The scheduled public bid opening is March 30th at 11 a.m. Revised plans for Cook Plaza parking lot have been received and will be reviewed internally by several committees. An updated plan for Waverly Place may also be available this week for discussion. Final New Jersey Department of Transportation reimbursement submittals were completed for projects completed last year, including Greenwood Avenue MA18, Glenwood Road MA19, and Burnett Road MA20, totaling $182,625 eligible funding. 
Plan, specifications, and bid documents for the MRC trail project will be advertised next week with similar intent to complete construction work during the summer months. Similarly, quotes for trails at Summer Hill Park and playground improvements at Dodge Field will be obtained in April. The rebuilt pump for Well AB treatment plant was delivered and installed last Thursday by Municipal Maintenance Incorporated, Cinnamon, Cinnaminson, New Jersey, uh, based on a contract awarded last November. The pump and motor have been operating routinely since installation. The Shade Tree Management Board. Madison has been awarded Tree City for the 36th year and the Growth Award for the 16th year. A scaled back Arbor Day celebration is being planned with a tree planting in Summerhill Park. Main Street pear trees between Prospect and Green Village are being pruned to better see business signs and to avoid being a hazard if the fire department needs to get access to adjoining buildings. For the uh, recreation department, spring sports are now underway and the normal tournament schedule will resume this season. The Junior Girls Lacrosse Battle of the Boroughs Tournament will be hosted at the MRC on Sunday, April 25th, and the Junior Boys Lacrosse Platypus Tournament on Saturday, June 5th, and Sunday, June 6th. The spring and summer schedule is filling up fast. 30 groups at 16 sites will be hosted this season. Some summertime slots do remain, but please reach out to Zach Ellis at recreation at rosenet.org as soon as possible to reserve space. The pickleball courts added at Madison High School are still seeing a lot of action, including a successful fundraising tournament organized by the Madison Education Foundation this month. The courts are available on a first come first serve basis when not in use by Madison High School, PE classes or athletics. The Nature Nuts program uh, will be returning to Memorial Park this summer after a one year hiatus due to COVID-19. Details on how to register will be posted on Rosenet as soon as they're available. The Environmental Commission. The Madison Environmental Commission is hosting is hosted a, a Master Gardener Talk Saturday on backyard composting that had more than 100 registrants. The event was co-sponsored with the Chathams and Morris Township. On Wednesday, March 24th, the MEC is holding its annual Green Vision Forum where students from our schools will share their visions for a greener Madison. The mayor and council members are attending. The Madison Chatham Townwide Yard Sale will be held on April 17th. Residents can list their yard sales on a digital map with a $10 tax deductible donation to the Great Swamp Watershed Association. Sustainable Madison, would like, they would like to thank the council and the borough staff for all the work they, they do to make our town sustainable, which resulted in another number one for Madison. We were sustainable New Jersey champions for 2021, certifying with the most points in the mid population category and with the second highest points among all the municipalities certifying this year. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. And now community affairs, Ms. Cohen. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, the next meeting of the Downtown Development Commission is scheduled for Thursday, April 15th at 7.15 via Zoom. If you're interested in volunteering for May Day uh, on May 1st, please email ddc at rosenet.org. Madison Farmer's Market will begin May 20th. New hours are from 1 to 6 p.m. The Taste of Madison that originally was scheduled for last week uh, will be held in May. Stay tuned for more details in the coming weeks. The search for Shelly the Easter egg began this past weekend um, and will run through Saturday, April 3rd, culminating with the Easter Fun Fest on that day from 11 to 1230. Social distancing, proper protocols in place. There will be a table set up where individuals may guess the number of jelly beans, see the Easter Bunny and turn in their Shelly Egg participation cards to win a children's bike and other prizes. The Madison Community Arts Center is still searching for a title sponsor for the new series, Spring Ahead with the Arts, a variety of entertainment, music, stand-up, children's theater, et cetera, which will be presented on Waverly Place Fridays from, May, from April 9th through May 28th. Uh, Work of Heart Productions will present several performances in July and August, and professional stage readings of new plays will be happening in April and May. Uh, MACA has a fundraising committee meeting 
on March 30th and then a board meeting on April 21st. Both will focus on fundraising initiatives for MACA and the Community Arts Center. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, and utilities, Ms. Ehrlich. Thank you, Mayor. From the Electric Department, uh, the Electric Department is starting to convert the streetlights on Woodland Road now to LEDs. The department set three new poles, one on Rosemont Ave, one on Rosewood Drive, and one on Union Hill Road in preparation for service upgrades. And the standby crew was called out twice last week, once to remove a large branch from a service line on Greenwood Ave, and once to repair a low-hanging wire in the roadway on Pomeroy Road. From the water department, the department installed a new water tap and service line to a new home at 57 Fairview Ave. And the water department responded to service calls for water turn off and turn on for customer valve replacements, as well as water shut off and meter removal for home demolitions. That's all for utilities. Thank you and health. Mr. Landrigan. Thank you, Mayor. As of today, Madison reports 705 total confirmed cases of COVID-19. Of those, 41 are still considered active. Vaccine sites in Morris County, including the regional site at the Rockaway Mall, continue to serve residents. New pharmacy sites continue to come online, including the Madison Walgreens and the Chatham Borough CVS. In response to the specific needs of our senior population, New Jersey has established a specific dedicated hotline for those 65 years of age and older. Those seniors who need assistance registering for the New Jersey vaccine scheduling system can call 856-249-7007. And finally, visit rosenet.org for updates on the vaccination program, COVID-19 testing locations, and other pandemic guidance. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. And now we're on to the first of two invitations for discussion. Uh, this one is, um, an opportunity to ask question makes comment on items on the agenda and our resolution. So uh, any other comments have to wait until later in the meeting. If you are online and wish to make a comment, you do so by raising, clicking the hand and you should do that as soon as you feel like you need to make a comment so you don't have to wait until the last uh, minute. Um, and if you change your mind, you can always unclick. If you're on a phone, you hit star nine and note for security reasons we cannot recognize anyone listed as anonymous or with a, a call without a number uh identified and when you are recognized or unmuted you must first state your name and address before stating any uh comments failure to do so may re result in you being muted or disconnected please state the agenda item or the resolution you're commenting on again it ha because it's limited to those items and uh, you will be given three minutes to comment, but we'll give you a one minute grace period and be stopped at four. And so as not to take from your time, we will uh, cap capture questions during your comments and answer, answer them during the agenda discussion. Um, the agenda discussions obviously will be including the introduction of the budget. And then there's also an agenda discussion on the joint meeting revised bylaws. And these are the um, resolutions uh, this first one will be uh, introduced uh, or uh, voted on during the uh, budget process. And it's the uh, resolution 88 to um, use a three year average for revenue anticipation. Typically, you can only uh, recognize the amount of uh, revenue was used in the past year. We could have put more pressure on this year's budget. Um, resolution 90. Uh, 2021 also related to the budget is a self-examination budget resolution. Resolution 91 is approving pro probationary firefighter list. This is uh, step one for uh, filling vacancy in the fire department. Uh, resolution 92 is authorizing advertisement for a part-time office assistant for a uh, vacancy that is coming up. And this is uh, funded through the 2021 municipal budget. Resolution 93 is authorizing contract with McNeese, Wallace, and Nurek LLC as special counsel for electric utility. Our previous counsel have retired. Uh, resolution 94 um, is authorizing advertisement for assistant director and counselors for Nature Nuts summer program. And this is contingent on uh, the continued progress related to COVID and be able to run the program. Resolution 95 is supporting the establishment of a Veterans Affairs Center in Northwest New Jersey. Currently, veterans in uh, Morris um, 
Warren and Sussex County have to travel into other counties, and this is supporting the efforts of um, our state senator, uh, U.S. senators, and also our uh, Congress members, Mikey Sherrill, Tom Malinowski, and Josh Gottenheimer, who represent this area. Resolution 96 is um, authorizing purchase of uh, borough cell phones and tablets through the New Jersey Cooperative Pricing uh, System, and this is not to exceed $40,000 funded for the budget. Uh, resolution 97 is um, amending uh, the uh, accepting amended uh, Madison Chatham Joint Meeting Bylaws, as already mentioned. Resolution 98 is appointing Alessandro Amato to the position of per diem safety tele telecommunications officer, sometimes known as dispatch. Uh, resolution 99 is uh, authorizing purchase of uh, Landscape chemical application and fertilizer services through the Somerset County Cooperative Pricing. And this is with True Green, not to exceed $40,000. And resolution uh, 100 is authorizing Good Grief to hold a 5K run at Geraldo Farm on Sunday, June 6, 2021. And re resolution 101 is authorizing use of Kings Road Municipal Parking Lot by the Madison area YMCA for group exercise. So you may comment on those, the, the budget, or the joint meeting bylaws. And uh, I'll call up uh, Tom Howard and POTUS. Okay, hello, Mayor. Hello, uh, council men and council women. Hello, everybody. My name is Tom Howard and POTUS. I live at 27 Pomeroy Road. Uh, thank you for coming tonight and for the opportunity to speak to you. Uh, since the budget, introduction of the budget, and tax resolutions on the agenda. I wanted to comment on uh, my opinion that has changed a little bit since the last time I spoke after hearing Mr. Burnett's presentation at the last meeting regarding the challenges to continue to receive the same revenue uh, within the different borough agencies, whether it be uh, construction, uh, some tax appeals, that could have possibly affect us, uh, the utilities. Uh, I think that you know, what you guys are proposing to move ahead with is uh, something that seems to be responsible for maintaining the services in the borough. I, I would like to reiterate that I hope we do uh, <clears throat> appoint uh, the two replacement firemen for those that retired. And there is obviously some savings there which should be discussed because the firemen that retired were at a much higher salary than the current firemen. Uh, another thing I wanna uh, bring up is uh, I'd like to get an update please on the position of the state aid and what the state aid might be used for, whatever, whatever dollar amount the borough gets, uh, whether it's within the borough, the board of ed, for capital projects, for reserves, whatever that might be. Um, I also wanna, I wanna look at the, I talked to you about the open space budget uh, the actual budget for this year, and then some of the projected budget uh, projects that you guys have on there. So one resolution that Mr. Hoover just brought up was number 73 from a previous meeting uh, regarding the renovation of the Hartley Dodge Plaza. And I see here on the open space budget that there's $400,000 that will come from the open space budget for that project but the project is about a million dollars. So I'd like to know where is the other $600,000 coming from if uh, we are under a lot of pressure to keep our expenses down, I'm not sure the urgency and if that's the most prudent project for us to undertake. I know you've already approved it at a previous meeting, but I still think that requires some discussion. I looked at your um, uh, video from the previous meeting and I didn't hear any discussion on where the funds would come from mayor. So that, I think that's kind of important for everybody to understand. But I understand that the plaza does need renovations uh, and the boroughs, the one who's are responsible right now for it. There's no matching grants for the actual plaza from what I understand. Uh, another thing I wanted to bring up please is, um, oh, so with regards to the open space uh, projects that are slated for the future or for right now, is it possible to prioritize what's on there and actually change some of the projects that were just 
possibly approved to be funded. Uh, but, one minute, Tom. Thanks, Mayor. I'm talking as fast as I can without confusing everybody. Uh, is, there, is there a chance that you can prioritize some of these projects and uh, put projects ahead of others that might have a really uh, good direct impact now for the community? Um, I mentioned to you that in the past, you know, this project that's been proposed to you many times to put in a paddle and pickleball complex over at the pool, I think that's very important. And I can't understand why we wouldn't take advantage of these generous volunteers who want to spearhead the entire project and actually raise some money from the public. Um, the other thing is I still see on your, on your proposed future budgets, putting in new turf fields at the high school for $1.5 million. It, it was never proposed at that high dollar amount. So it, it's something that needs to be discussed eventually. I see you, Mayor, you're yep. just about to cut we're, me off. Huh? We're, 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 we're at time, Tom, okay. but we'll have another comment period. So thank you. Uh, and just to, the um, couple of things, the federal aid, um, Jim will be addressing that. Uh, as far as, and we'll, we'll, we'll make sure we cover that during the whole budget discussion, the open space, the uh, contract for the, that was awarded for the plaza, we are get, getting grant money and um, we run the risk of running, losing the uh, partnership money if we don't move forward with that, not to mention that the, as people know, that come to a partly non regular basis, we have it partially roped off just because of the heaving and all that. Um, and we will be, um, as, Time goes on, we'll be addressing the priorities related to the open space, uh, uh, historic preservation and recreation fund uh, projects. And uh, we now bring up Pat Rowe. All right, can you hear me now? Yes. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Pat Rowe, Pine Avenue, Madison, New Jersey. Um, couple things real fast about the budget. First, there's a note that there's a resolution 89 um, in the agenda, but it is not included in the packet, so it's difficult to actually make any comments about the budget uh, numbers because we don't know what they are yet. And the next time we'll get to comment is going to be after the council votes on at least the introduction. Uh, but having said that, um, I still believe that this is premature. Um, I had a brief text conversation with Jim last Thursday. Uh, I had been asking for some other numbers a couple weeks ago and was getting back to them to try to find out what was happening with that. And I did have a chance to ask him whether or not you had received final information about what the um, the money coming out of the federal government was going to be or what kind of restrictions or um, other conditions were going to be placed on the use of the money. And at the time, he told me he wasn't sure and that he hadn't received a lot of information. If that's still the case, I'm really not sure how you can introduce a budget tonight. Um, I understand at the last meeting in his conversation with Councilwoman Bailey, he talked about simply dropping in the number in place uh, of the tax increase and making one mod other modification. But I believe that the changes that would have to be made or should be made are much more comprehensive than that. The borough took a significant amount of money, additional money, out of the utilities this year to make up for a shortfall. I think at a minimum, if you get a significant windfall from the federal government, that money should be placed back especially in light of the fact from what I've read online, the uh, federal government is going to restrict the use, at least in terms of your ability to cut taxes. So you may be able to bring back a zero, but you can't use the money to reduce it below that. So the best way to affect an additional windfall, if you will, for the, for the taxpayers and the rate players in town is to move the money back into the utilities and affect the lower rate there. I think you know the intention of that money is to put money into people's hands and not put money into the borough surplus and frankly, if all you do is recognize the money and use a portion of it to lower the tax rate to zero, the, the rest of the money is going to simply fall into surplus, which I don't believe was the intention of that money being granted to the states and local communities. So I'll look forward to hearing the rest of the uh, budget presentation, and I may have more comments at the end. Uh, but please bear that in mind as you discuss the introduction of the budget tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you, Pat. And just a couple of quick teasers on the federal money. And as I said, Jim will cover it uh, shortly. Um, part of it, uh, it's for one, it is a moving target, which is uh, goes with territory. But I did a attend a virtual uh, webinar last week. We would anticipate 50% of it coming in 
shortly, 50% coming in 12 months, and you were correct that it can't be used for tax reduction. Um, and, um, and there's a whole host of uh, cans and cannot do's. Um, certainly the intent of that money is to uh, help uh, municipalities and to help the residents. And so um, that will be a very, very much a guiding uh, principle as we go forward. But uh, to the, one of the things in the webinar was it, it is virtually impossible to use this in any way for the current year budgets. And that's what most municipalities are doing. And uh, Mike Chagru. Thank you so much, Mayor. Um, I would uh, sincerely like to thank the borough for moving forward to replace the retired Madison career uh, fire. Name, name, name and oh, address. Sorry, sorry, Mayor. Uh, Mike Chagru, 24 West End. Um, I'd like to thank the Borough Council sincerely for moving to replace the retired Madison career firefighters. I'd like to respectfully remind the Council that two career firefighters retired and need to be replaced. I heard President Byrne mention replacing one. Um, if the issue is that one of those career firefighters is still on the books, as we said, um, I would add that one of our career firefighters will be out for the next five weeks due to a medical issue, putting more stress on an already skeleton staff. So my question for the council is, will the council move forward immediately to replace both firefighters? Thank you. Thank you, Mike. And uh, as noted on the agenda is the uh, step one, which is creating the um, um, hire list, which will uh, allow us to uh, uh, shore up the fire department and uh, anticipate at least filling the one vacancy as quickly as possible. And we now bring on, uh, I believe it's Scott Holland. Thank you, Mayor. It's uh, Chris Holland. 11 Locust Street, Madison. Um, I just, uh, a couple of things. Um, there was a, obviously I'm one of the persons uh, representing a group that's trying to put the um, paddle, pickle and basketball down at the Madison pool. <clears throat> Something that Tom, Mr. Highland Pudis alluded to. Um, we put together a list of questions based on a couple of meetings that we have with you folks um, on March 7th. Uh, during the March 8th meeting, um, it wasn't mentioned in the communications to the town. I just want to make sure that it was noted. I do recognize that, <clears throat> Mayor, you had a death in your family, and I, my condolences to your family, but um, I just wanted to get that on the record. Um, the other item is um, in regards to Resolution 73. Um, I don't really know the, the procedures as far as the of government, but Resolution 73 doesn't ever appear on any of the agenda items for review. And it was mentioned um, towards the end of one of the meetings. And I just didn't understand how the resolution be, can be skipped over uh, in an agenda item. So um, really what I'm trying to do in my official capacity is, is taking this feedback back to the Recreation Advisory Committee who is supporting uh, the, the project at the poll. And I just want to be able to have some feedback for them uh, in our meeting, which is this coming Wednesday. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. And uh, yeah, I apologize for the delay in, in getting that. And uh, we'll, we'll touch base before Wednesday. Um, just a, um, for, so people can understand when pro major projects are taken on, there's really two steps in the project. It is the appropriation of the money, which is where usually the discussion happens, and that is done by ordinance. So the in ordinance is introduced and then has a second hearing. So that's where, when the money was appropriated for the uh, Plaza project. Uh, and then the resolution is what grants the contract. So that is kind of a, a wrap up. And so very little discussion often happens when the contract is granted because we were, we're being guided by uh, public contract rule laws. And so we're not interviewing and such that this being a historic project, the contractor had to be qualified. So there was that step. It's really um, just the resolution grants that contract. And uh, we now bring up Denise Katz. Hi, Denise Katz, 24 Parkside Ave. Thank you. Um, hi. 
just um, wanted to state that, you know, I had a chance to go over some of the presentations made regarding the budget and I wanted to thank the council and especially Jim Burnett. Um, it really helped me understand the pressure that the, the council and our finances are under. And I really appreciate all of the assistance in helping the public understand that tough decisions have to be made and we should all be involved in understanding what's going on this year. Thank you. Thank you. And now we bring up uh, Christine Boyle. Town Council meeting. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Christine Boyle and I live on Nine Buckingham Drive. I'd like, I'd like to uh, just thank the council for its ongoing diligence and transparency during this year's budget process. I'm proud of how Madison has been able to weather the COVID 2020 storm, and it is largely due to the responsible budgeting of this governing body uh, throughout 2020 and prior years. M Matt, excuse me, Madison survived all of the 2020 hurdles without incurring additional debt, which alone results in cost savings to all of us or without cutting all the many services it provides to its residents, including, for example, sewer and garbage and recycling pickup, services other towns charge their residents for separately. In addition, Madison provided direct financial relief to its residents and small businesses impacted by COVID through an electric utility bill relief application process, which is expected to continue, as I understand it, to further support our town. Amazingly, all of this was achieved despite being down $1 million in revenues. I support this year's budget, including the prudent 2% tax increase. It is reasonable to expect revenues to be down in 2021, and yet our costs are expected to increase for among other things, the debt service for the required upgrade to the sewage treatment plant and increased pension costs. And it sounds like we have some additional hiring to do based on the other comments being made this evening. The budget, including the contemplated increase, is necessary not only to plan for new recurring costs we're aware of today, but also to make sure we're ready for the next storm, whether it be another Hurricane Sandy, a random Halloween tornado, or God forbid, another pandemic, regardless of short-term federal funding we may receive to address immediate needs. Thank you for your time and uh, thank you for listening. Thank you, Christine. Now, Alex Jennings. Hi, everybody. Um, this is Alex Jennings. I live at Six Edgewood Road. Um, my comment is also about the budget and along the lines of Denise Katz's and Christine Boyles. I just wanted to first say how appreciative I am of how hard the council members and borough administrators work on the budget and how you always have um, the best interests of all Madisonians in mind. At the last meeting, um, there were some who were upset that the council is proposing a 2% tax increase. And I just wanted to say that my feeling is that this increase is um, both reasonable and prudent. Um, it seems to me it's better to do a little bit of an increase now. And even if we have to do a little bit more next year, if that's necessary, rather than a bigger amount, if we run into trouble with any of the various big expenses the borough might have coming up. Um, one thing that came up in um, a presentation at the last meeting was that Maplewood has to have an 8% increase, I believe, in property tax this year. So I know that I would like to avoid a situation where Madison would have to have that big of an increase. And I think what the council is proposing is the best way to accomplish that. So thanks so much for everything you're, you're doing. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Kathy Bailey. Hi, this is Kathy Daly, 20 West End Avenue. Boy, I am just so impressed at how many Madison people are here on the, on the, uh, in the meeting tonight who just can't wait to pay more taxes. Um, I am not one of those people. Um, and I, I have uh, one concern about the, the resolution you're gonna pass tonight, resolution number 89. Like um, I think Pat Rowe also said before, uh, he didn't see it um, in the package. I was looking for it also. Um, since we haven't had a chance to look at it, if you don't plan to table it tonight, I respectfully request that you read the entire resolution into the uh, record so that we all know what you're, what you're voting on, um, since we really don't know right now. Um, also, I wanna, uh, all, I wanna 
um, ask Mayor if you could clarify something you just said earlier um, when you said that the additional COVID relief funding that Madison is expecting to receive is not going to be able to be used in the current budget. Uh, as far as I know, that's not a requirement. In fact, um, my understanding is that uh, the prioritization for that money, it's supposed to be providing relief for people in, in Madison and community, communities that it's going to as soon as possible, recognizing the hardships that we've encountered as a community over the last year um, and not necessarily be put into our surplus to be used for future years. And speaking of using surplus, um, I, I understand the last speaker, I'm sorry, I forget who it was, but the, um, the surplus, the amount of surplus that we used last year in 2020, by my calculations, and if this is incorrect, I hope somebody uh, in the borough administration can, can correct me on it, but it looks to me like it was only five or 6% of the entire surplus that Madison is sitting on. In one, if you add all the surplus accounts together, five or 6% of the surplus, $1 million out of about 8 million, 18 million. I, I don't understand how, how people think that we've really dipped deep into our pockets on this one. Um, and, and I apologize if I sound a little annoyed, but um, really and truly, I, I am astounded that people can hardly wait to pay more taxes. I, like I said, I'm not one of those people. And I think that, uh, that Madison has more resources available to it than are being acknowledged by the council. Um, thank you very much. And again, I apologize for my annoyed tone. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kathy. So we'll address much, most of that during um, the uh, presentation and the as we go through the um, ordinances and resolutions related to the, to the budget. And uh, Dennis Schreiber. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Dennis Schreiber, Amelia Court. And uh, good evening, fellow council, well, not fellow council, but other council members. Good to see you all. Uh, I'm going to sleep really well tonight, having listened to the prior speakers say how happy they are to pay more in property taxes. And I now recognize, and I got to give you a lot of credit, all good flows from liberal Democrat progressive policy. So thank you very much. And to Alex Jen Jennings, if you'd like to pay my property taxes for me, give me a call. I'd be more than happy to uh, talk, talk to you about it. Anyway, I'm looking forward to Mr. Burnett's presentation on the budget because uh, it's a critical time in our uh, fiscal history here, fiscal, fiscal condition, because he keeps claiming, I know all the presentations, everything that's on the... Uh, CFO website shows that we're on dire financial straits due to the uh, potential loss of tax revenues from properties in Geralda Farms and uh, out at Rheology. And that's probably true, but we're still sitting on a huge surplus in the electricity budget uh, that uh, you all know, you use it to siphon off to support the capital budget and other items. Uh, and thus mitigating the tax increases, property tax increases. But I'd like to know, and, I, 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 and I look, I'm looking forward to Jim's presentation, what capital budgeting projects have been cut from the budget going forward? Because if we're in such dire straits, I think we should go down to bare budget and do just what is act, actually necessary to do, not, is, not what's nice to do. And I'll go back to my pet peeve. I'll save you $300,000 by telling you to cut those damn bump outs that are proposed on Green Avenue. Get rid of them. They don't do any good. So the other thing is, I'd like to know where the headcount reductions are coming from, because I don't, don't see anything about that. And, uh, you know, I think you're trying to do the right things, but you're not doing it in the right way. So I look forward to Mr. Burnett's presentation in the next few minutes. Thanks very much. Thank you, Dennis. And yes, we'll uh, address some of those things. I, I do want to make a request to anyone that speaks is please direct your comments to um, 
the council members, you should not make any uh, direct comments to someone that's already uh, spoken just out of respect. Certainly can make general comments about uh, previous things that were said though. And uh, Maria Slaybell. Hi, Maria Slaybaugh, 28 Stafford Drive. Um, hello, Mayor, Council Members, Borough Staff. Um, I would also like to comment on the budget. Um, I've tried to get more informed about the budget each year. I'm not sure how well I'm doing, but I can't be the only one who sees just how complicated it is once you dive in. Um, council Members have to be thinking ahead, have to consider all the factors that we've heard in some of the comments and seen in the presentations. And some of these are both tangible and intangible and known and unknown. And so balancing the worst and best case scenarios and also considering the impact on homeowners who you know, themselves may be struggling with impacts from COVID is, is no easy task. The council's response to COVID cri the COVID crisis over the last year by finding ways to offer financial relief and other support to the community signals to me that you get it uh, and you get those challenges. So digging into some of the details um, just uh, echoing some of the, the other comments I've heard tonight. I'm concerned about some of the risk with our affordable housing obligations. The money for COVID uh, from the state may or may not be coming, is not guaranteed, can't be used in every scenario. And clearly the revenue declines are concerning and, and we don't know if they'll ever ramp up. So while it may be easy to pick apart and challenge the budget, it seems to set us up to be prepared for some very real possibilities. And I liken it in my own way to how I think of a household being run. You save for the what ifs, you buy insurance, you make the most informed decisions you can and try to balance it all. So I'm just looking to express my gratitude for the work involved in putting this budget together and the difficult decisions from those of you who are closest to this and understand the various trade-offs and considerations. Um, it's clear you've put the time in to propose what seems reasonable to me and to others that I've talked to about this. Um, Clearly no one wants a tax increase, especially considering the kinds of comments that come from that, uh, from the public. And, you know, it's, it seems like you're doing what's necessary and some of this reality is unavoidable. I'm a big fan of planning ahead. Um, I'd also like to avoid a risk of a shock to our taxes if things don't go our way down the road. And so considering how little our taxes have gone up compared to the school or county or even other towns, it seems like this is a sensible approach to our budgeting. The proposal, the supporting points are backed up with solid rationale, transparency, lots of community input. And so I'd just like to state that I support the budget recommendations and thank you. Thank you. And uh, Joseph Fillmore. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Joe Gilmore, 134 Central Avenue. I would like to thank the Council for helping initiate the hiring process for the fire department. Can you tell me if we will get back to 14 career firefighters this year? And if so, what the timeline for their hires would be one week, one month, two months. I just want to reiterate how important it is to replace the career staff that is retired. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. And as pointed out, the uh, hiring list uh, resolution is in place so like that process and go through. And uh, as stated last uh, council meeting, we want to move quickly on the uh, first vacancy and bring up uh, Dave Luber. Dave Luber, 7 Lawrence Road. Like the administration, I am very concerned about the future for Madison budgets. Revenues are not improving. The vacancy rates at Girolda Farms are scary and they do not bode well for future tax appeals. And the borough is facing additional costs on another, a number of other fronts, as Jim has described before. We need to be prudent in our budgeting. We need to start getting ready now for what could be a difficult future. I support the budget and believe that the 2% tax increase is justified. Noting that the percentage of real estate taxes that actually go to fund municipal operations is about 22% of the total tax bill, a 2% increase in the municipal tax rate would result in a 0.44% tax increase or about $66 a year to someone with a 2020 tax bill of 15,000. 
This is clearly affordable and helps Madison prepare for future eventualities. Measured against the 2014 strategic guidelines, this budget satisfies practically all the stated guidelines. One guideline where it does fail is in the amount to be transferred to the general capital fund. The budgeted transfer is below the 10% minimum set in guideline number five. But I understand why the borough had to cut somewhere. I do feel that multiple years of under transfers to the general capital fund would be unsustainable. Our streets would look like they did 10 years ago. I am hoping that the federal rescue money may be able to help us there. This is a solid, fiscally responsible budget for a difficult time. It should be approved. Thank you. And uh, Ross Snyder. Hi, Council. Ross Snyder, 12 Pomeroy Road. I just want to say that in, a, in the face of this incredibly challenging environment that we're in on so many fronts, I'm very glad right now to live in Madison. Looking around and seeing neighboring towns in these precarious positions, I'm grateful for the resilient financial position we're in, thanks to many years of prudent fiscal management from a lot of people on this call right now. I also think it's interesting to characterize the ability to make tough decisions during tough times with a very small tax increase on the table as being excited about paying taxes. Obviously the best tax increase is no tax increase. And I may not agree with every decision coming out of Hartley Dodge, but I'm glad our elected leaders are not over mortgaging our future or betraying our long-term budgetary principles for short-term gains. I know we'll get through this time and I'm confident in the ability of our mayor and our council to get us there. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and Dennis, I see your hand up, but there's only one comment period uh, per person per period. You can comment again when we get to the second one. So uh, please uh, hang tight and we will uh, get to you. I, I do, did want to just recognize uh, because those that uh, attend the meeting cannot see how many, as we would say, are in the audience. Um, as you would see if this was in person. And right now we have 36 attendees in the audience, but that means that does include uh, some of professional staff or uh, our support staff. We'll now move on to the, um, the budget information. So we'll start with uh, Jim's uh, presentation on the uh, budget as it is, and then we will go, go through the um, uh, resolutions and so on that need to be done. And also joining on the screen is Valerie Dolan, our auditor. Welcome. Mayor, I'm not sure if we want to do um, the vote on the resolution for the three-year average and for the cap bank ordinance and then go into the discussion first. I, I think that's what we were anticipating. Because we, without, without those, so yeah. the other action cannot take place. And so we Correct. were, I'm, so, I'm, I'm doing this job, so I, I apologize. <laughs> So resolution 88 is a resolution that's allowing um, the borough of Madison, um, we're requesting permission from the Division of Local Government Services to use a three-year average on a, sh on a few small revenue items. As uh, Administrator Cody um, has said in the past, the, uh, in the budget, we cannot anticipate in 2021 revenues that are greater than what we actually collected in 2020. And there are certain lines where we know we should be able to get more in revenue this year than last year. So we're asking for those um, items to be uh, approved through this three-year average. We're not doing a lot of three-year average because we think that would be extremely risky. So resolution 88 um, uh, basically uh, asks for approval to do um, averaging on three items, other licenses, fees and permits and gross net user fees. So if there um, is any questions on that, I can answer that. If not, Mayor, you take it over from there. Any questions for Jim on this? May I have a, a motion for a resolution of the borough of uh, resolution 88, 2021 resolution of the borough of Madison, Madison um, County of Morris, State of New Jersey, requesting permission from DLGS for use of three year average for revenue anticipation for 2021. Mayor, I move uh, resolution 88-2021. Second. Any uh, further council discussion? Rachel. Roll call vote, please. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, Rachel. I'm, I'm moving too fast here. 
Just a minor point of clarification, since this was brought up in the uh, first discussion period, the agenda mentions 89 and then the resolution is listed as 88. So for the record, are we clear on which resolution this is so that everyone um, knows this the is, question? This is resolution 88. Resolution 89 is the entire budget document, which you were all emailed. The front cover of it, sheet three of the budget document, let me confirm that it's not sheet, sheet two. two, sheet, sheet three. Two and three is um it, oh thank you val i was here bailing me out um is basically the acknowledgement that yes we've received this document and that we're voting to introduce it and that's all we're doing tonight is voting to introduce the budget the whole concept is that the budget document is then up and available for a minimum of 28 days before the council actually votes to adopt it so uh you know the school board by example has not really had nothing wrong with the school board. I know they have their process of doing things. They don't have eight budget hearings like we do before their budget introduction. They introduce the budget and then people comment on it and then they vote on it. We've had eight meetings before this talking about the budget. Now we're gonna introduce it. It will be out in the public for 28 days, available for everyone to see, review and discuss, and then council will vote on it in April. And going back to comments on 89, the the detail the details are not actually in the resolution. It's in the the fact that the, whole the sheet that whole document. So that's why exactly. so yeah. if, uh, it gets put out there for the public to see. So any further discussion, eighty eight, Osprey. And that that document is available starting tomorrow online for the public. Yeah, it'll be yes. available tonight. We'll make it available tonight. Yep. Thank you. But that's that's resolution eighty nine. Correct. That, that's eighty nine. Eight eighty eight yeah. is the. Uh, the three-year average resolution, which is the first, we have to kind of take this in a ministerial process, number one being this three-year average resolution. All right, any, see no further discussion, I can roll call vote on resolution 88-2021. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Ms. Byrne? Yes. Mr. Hoover? Yes. Ms. Cohen? Yes. Ms. Ehrlich? Yes. Mr. Landry? Yes. All right, I call up uh, ordinance 13-2021 for first reading. I ask the borough clerk to read said ordinance by title. Calendar year 2021 ordinance to exceed the municipal budget appropriation limits and to establish a cap thing. Mayor, I move ordinance 13-2021. Second. All right, and uh, again, this establishes a cap bank, but doesn't necessarily mean, mean we need it, but it's uh, this is on an annual basis. Any other comments, Jim, on this? Or? Just that it's a ministerial process that basically allows us, gives us flexibility down the road if we need to increase the budget more, um, more, more than uh, the standard appropriation um, cap allows. All right, any further discussion? Roll call vote, please. Bailey? Yes. Chris Byrne? Yes. Mr. Hoover? Yes. Ms. Cohen? Yes. Ms. Ehrlich? Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. All right, now we move on to budget introduction. And well, thank you, Mayor. Michael's going to turn the slides, and uh, for some reason, I get kicked off uh, my weaker than on my not great home internet. Uh, Ray can uh, jump in, or if I bit under the weather. Um, uh, thank you, Michael, for uh, projecting this. Uh, you can advance to the next slide. Uh, this is a, a quick summary of the schedule that we have. Um, I think everybody's seen it. You can go to the next slide, Michael. Um, tonight's agenda, uh, we plan on talking about the resolution, which we did, the cap bank ordinance, which we did. We'll do the budget presentation, and then um, we will uh, have a request to vote for the introduction of the budget once completed those state documents along with the user-friendly budget gets sent down to Trenton and as mentioned before there will be um, a, a 20 a minimum 28 day period between introduction and adoption so the budget can be out and seen by everyone next slide please uh, this is a slide that we've seen um, in the past the challenges of, of uh, various uh, towns due to COVID. I found out um, that our, our good friends in Chatham unfortunately had to issue emergency uh, bonds to cover cash flows. We did not. Other towns you've seen in previous uh, presentations had to do that. Um, Chatham, I believe, is going to be introducing a budget closer to a 3% increase. So there, there are a number of towns that are struggling. 
And uh, we're, I think, in actually better position than most. You can go to the next slide, Michael. I wanted to update council on just three of the revenues that are, um, that have been problematic. You can see 2019, we collected $173,000 in court revenue. 2020, we collected 67,000. 2021, the numbers are extremely suppressed. So there's uh, more than likely going to be a significant reduction in the number, in the amount of court revenue that's coming in this year as well. Nothing's, nothing is pointing towards it getting better anytime soon. You can go to the next slide, Michael. This is parking fees for the daily parking fees. See a little picture of uh, uh, um, the Crescent and there's daily parking behind the public safety building. The lots are empty. We're barely getting any revenue in um, at all for, for daily parking. Um, I don't think we posted February's, um, which is why it's at zero, but you can see in 2019, we collected 80,000. In 2020, we collected 20,000. I don't know what we're gonna collect in 2021, but unless things change significantly and people start going back into New York City, the number is going to be much, much smaller than prior years. You can go to the next slide, Michael. Interest on deposits in 2019, if you look at the bottom column there, you see 425,000. In 2020, it's 124,000. In 2021, uh, it, it, my guesstimate is it's, it's going to be somewhere in the magnitude of $50,000, $60,000 um, in interest. I'm not on uh, a trader on Wall Street trying to determine what short-term interest rates are going to be, but I can tell you that uh, the revenues are off significantly. You can see how much they dropped off in 2020, and they're not coming back. Um, you can go to the next slide, please, Michael. Um, if you add all of those up, just those three revenue lines, um, it's safe to assume that uh, the revenues could be $600,000 less across those three lines. Um, it's just uh, not a good situation. And as some people reference, there's, there's nothing that's indicating it's going to get better anytime soon. Uh, so I just need to, need to stress that, that that's a, clearly a problem. Next slide, please. Budget timing. Uh, we have to introduce now. Um, the state uh, has come out and said that uh, the U.S. Treasury is expected to issue further regulations and guidance on how, how local governments can use the funds that we are going to receive. Um, and it's uncertain when we're going to get those regulations and guidance. And the current introduction and a budget and adoption dates for municipalities and counties will not be extended. So we have to basically introduce tonight. If you go to the next slide, you'll actually see the local finance notice. These are the rules that are given to us by the state of New Jersey. And it says... Uh, in the highlight, municipal introduction and approval of budget has to, typically it's supposed to be done by February, but they're always giving us an extra month and a half has to be done by March 30th. So it's March 22nd. That's why we're doing it now. Adoption has to be done by the end of April. So the state is basically coming out and saying, you have to introduce your budget now. And some people are saying, well, we're getting some money from the federal government. What does that mean? And the state is basically saying it means nothing. You're not supposed to use that money or consider that money in this year's budget. We're not getting any of the money until later on in the year. We don't know how much of the money we're getting until later on in the year. We don't know what the rules and regulations are going to be on that money. It looks like we're going to get a significant amount. The last thing I want to do is make a mistake and make an assumption in our budget based on that money. And then we don't get it because we didn't follow the rules and guidance. We don't have the rules and guidance to follow. So we need to just move forward with a budget now based on what we know. Next slide, please, Michael. So uh, the COVID relief money that we are getting um, based on what we are hearing, we've not had any official from the treasury or DLGS is a significant dollar amount. This is money just for the municipality it is not the money that residents are going to get in the $1,400 checks. It's not money that the schools are going to get. I reached out to the schools and said, how much money are you going to get? They're like, we don't know, but we're not supposed to budget for it. I said, good, same with us. A preliminary indications are we're going to get $1.7 million. That is a tremendous amount of money. However, it's not going to even fill the revenue gap of the loss that we had last year and this year. So that's one thing to keep in mind. The second thing is preliminary indications are telling us, as Pat Rowe mentioned, cannot be used for tax relief and can be used for capital items. So uh, while the rules are not set, that seems to be the guidance. So administration is saying, 
we're not making any, shouldn't make any decisions now. In council's mind, you all should be thinking that this goes towards a capital item. Um, and uh, Dennis Schreiber said, what if we cut in capital? Go back and look at the five-year capital plan that we presented um, back in January, and you'll see that it's millions of dollars less than what we have in 2022, 2023, and 2024. We cut significant amount of capital projects because of that. This money may be able to fund one of those capital projects, but we're not getting the money until the later on in 2020, 2021, and we're only getting half of it then and half of it in 2022. So that's where that money should be going right now. Council really will figure it out when we get there. We don't know the rules or guidelines. Um, we, the bottom line is the last point. These are important funds to the borough. And we don't want to run afoul of any rules and regulations on how they can be spent. That would be disastrous if for some reason we made a mistake and didn't get the $1.7 million. That, that would be terrible fiduciaries uh, on all of our parts. So I'm asking council to be patient. I'm asking for the public to be patient in regard to that. Next Val slide. Valerie is waving her hand there. Yeah, so look. Oh, and ahead, just in the guidelines that are starting to come out, you have until 2024. December of 2024 to spend those funds so that you can properly budget and properly spend those funds in accordance with the grants about accordance with the regulations and when you can develop the appropriate use of those funds. They've given a lengthier period of time where some of the other funds, they sh shut you off and you had to spend them very quickly. These have a much longer trail, which is going to be good for it when it comes time to budget and be able to use that funds at a later date. Thank you. Good Thanks, Val. That's mentioned on the bullet, but I'm I'm talking fast and exactly. <laughs> so, uh, Michael, you can go to the next slide. Just as a reminder, these are the um, department appropriations. Um, this slide has been presented before, but I just want to show everyone the um, the various departments. And then um, the next slide. Uh, the reason I have Family Feud on here is because the mayor, from time to time, will have um, students come. In and be the mayor for a day or be a council member for the day. And the, he plays a game of Family Feud. And um, we, uh, we play the song and we ask the students the question, um, what are the top six largest department costs in the borough? And no one ever gets sewage treatment. It's just unfortunate that no one thinks about it, but it's, uh, it's one of the top six. And it's just important to, to notice um, and, and to know these, they're all extremely important. Police Department, Public Works, Fire, Garbage Recycling, Library, and, and Sewage are all, all critical. So I just wanted to point those out. Michael, you can go to the next slide. This is the actual um, budget uh, in brief that we produce every year. Um, this has some slight changes from the March 8 um, item that was uh, budget that was presented. Um, basically grants, we get more um, clarity on the grants that we're receiving. So none of the numbers on this have changed with the exception of grant revenue and, and operating expenses. Um, other than that, it stayed the same. This includes a 2% tax increase on existing rateables. And um, Michael, you can go to the next slide. Um, there's nothing that's changed on the water utility. Um, and Michael, you can go to the next slide. Um, there's nothing that's changed on the electric utility in terms of the assumptions. Excuse me. This. Uh, this, this is obviously the question of the evening. Why is the administration asking for a 2% tax increase? Um, you can go to the next slide, Michael. We have a, a tremendous list of concerns that you've heard of and that were mentioned this evening. Revenues are down by over a million dollars. We have to acknowledge that and acknowledge that there are certain revenues like parking, like interest that may not come back for years. Reserves are dropping. Free balances dropped $2.7 million in the last two years. We pull out um, five over $5 million of municipal surplus that we use in the following year's budget. And it's down to, you know, the free balance is down to, I think, a little over $3 million. So it's uh, millions of dollars lower than it has been in the past. We have significant tax appeals coming. Uh, we've talked about that at prior council meetings. We have a mandated substation repair that could be $800,000 or more. We have a tremendous affordable housing obligation that if we don't get federal tax credits, we will have to pay, uh, and that could be up to $12 million. All of our collective bargaining agreements are expiring at year end, um, so future labor costs are unknown. 
We have new debt payments in 2022 for sewage treatment that are going to be $300,000 or more based on a $9 million renovation of the sewage treatment plant. And we have other increasing costs. Um, one that I pointed out the last meeting was the joint insurance fund just coming and saying, hey, guess what? Your workers comp is going to be increasing by 90,000 for sure, could increase by $300,000 if certain legislation passes. Um, our pension costs continue to rise. And I think that's the most important thing to acknowledge that if our taxes have only gone up 4% since 2013 on, on an existing home, yet um, the pension bill for the police and fire has gone up 36% in that time. And the garbage costs have gone up 20% in that time. We have to increase taxes because the price of things are going up. It's just, a and, and we could just cut all capital and have a 0% tax increase, but then the roads would fall apart and the water system would fall apart and we wouldn't have trucks to plow the snow. This budget includes the 2% tax increase and it's there because we want to continue to do our best to maintain uh, the level of service that residents um, expect from plowing, from everything. So garbage removal, the Ch Chatham Borough, you pay for garbage removal in Chatham Borough. Chatham Borough, you pay for sewage. You, you have a separate sewage bill um, in, in Chatham Borough. You don't have that here in Madison. It's embedded into your taxes. So um, there's a tremendous number of concerns, but um, all of them together point to the to a 2% tax increase being reasonable. And I am sure that come April, I'll be able to present to council a list of what the other towns in our area are doing in terms of increases. And they'll all be doing 2%, 3%, 4%. Maplewood was at 8%, now it looks like they're at 9%. So um, I'll be able to present that. And, and obviously council will have a better, and the public will have a better indication that all municipalities are in this um, difficult situation. Michael, you can go to the next slide, please. Um, you've seen this before, but I actually um, expanded on this a little bit. You can see that from 2013 to 2020, Madison's um, property tax, municipal, not school or county, Madison's municipal property tax from 2013 to 2020 has only gone up 4%. Chatham Borough, Florida Park, Mountain Lakes, all the others have gone up significantly more. You can actually see the breakdown in the tax rate change um, in the little table to the left, where it actually went down from 2013 to 2014, went up a little bit 2015, 2016, 17, 18, 19, 20, you can see the changes. If you add them up, you're gonna say, hey, Jim, that doesn't add up to 4%, but that's because it has to do with uh, math. You go from 100 and then you go down 1.5% and then you go up 1.5%, you don't get back to 100. It just has to do with arithmetic. It also has to do with the fact that our tax rate um, uh, only goes to three decimal points and it gets to average, it gets, um, uh, it has to get averaged out beyond three decimal points. So, um, but shouldn't be talking about arithmetic. I should be talking about the fact that it's only going up 4% from 2013 to 2020. So we need to, administration strongly recommends that we do a 2% tax increase this year. Michael, you can go to the next slide. Um, everyone has the ability to go on our website and type in their taxes and see the breakdown of the taxes. This uh, gray box here shows um, the nice little widget that Michael put on our website. Where if you type in your taxes, in this case, I typed in $15,000, you can see the 2020 column there shows the breakdown of $15,000 between uh, County Board of Ed and uh, Borough of Madison. It then goes backwards and calculates the 2013 tax breakdown. So you can see this house went up from $13,000 to $15,000. There was an $1,878 increase, which you can see in the bottom of the third column. Of that increase, $127 is what we're talking about today. That's the municipal portion of the budget. The other parts of the tax increase were due to the county and the Board of Education. So um, the tax increase of 1878 78, 70% of it was due to the schools, 23% of that increase, $434 of the 1878 was the county and only 6% was the borough. So if people are anxious about increasing property taxes, um, I respect that, I'm a resident, I understand, 
Um, it's just important for you to understand where those increases over the last few years have come from. Uh, go to the next slide. We talked about this Maplewood's um, uh, taxes are uh, going up significant. A lot of other towns are as well. Michael, you can go to the next slide. Um, so the 2% tax increase to, to kind of summarize, um, we have our big list of concerns. We've only increased it 4% in the last eight years. It will keep us on firm financial footing. Costs like police going up 36% in, in, from 2013, police and fire pension, garbage going up 20%, costs go up every year. COVID relief funds cannot be used for tax relief. I don't want to even consider that because we could run afoul and lose that money. And then finally, um, the professionals recommend it. Val will talk in a few minutes, but I want to advance to the next slide, which is a quote from our bond council. Um, Steve Rogat's our bond council, and he says, rating agencies greatly prefer to see gradual increases in property taxes. Agencies would consider a town poorly managed if they did a number of 0% tax increases, followed by a significant tax increase. Long-term planning is important. Towns that have rating agencies, uh, towns that rating agencies consider poorly managed are typically put on credit watch or have their credit rating lowered. In other words, if we do and continue to go down this path of only having a 4% tax increase and, key, and, and not doing any um, tax increases over the next few years, we will be in a situation where we have to do be like Maplewood and do an eight or 10% tax increase. First of all, that's problematic. Second, it could, um, it's, it's poor management. We need to smooth it out and make it um, smaller amounts. Third, we could lose our, our AAA credit rating because of it. So for those reasons, administration um, is asking for a 2% uh, tax increase. And Val, if you wanna jump in here now and talk about some of the other towns and what your thoughts are. Good evening, everyone. Um, yes, uh, we've been obviously this is the height of municipal budget season and at, you are many towns are plighted with the exact same situations and areas that you are. Um, fortunately, Madison is once again in a really you are in a very good financial position, you were able to weather what the pandemic has catastrophically caused other municipalities within even within our own county we've seen towns that were not prepared so diligence that you've put in budgets in previous years helped you are helping you weather this loss of revenue but like jim said the rebound of these revenues is a really unknown factor we don't know i mean especially areas in these towns that had towns of yours and other towns that had train lines I mean, are they ever going to rebound to where we are? We saw them before and you were budgeting larger revenues for them. Um, when I went through the budget and was reviewing everything with Jim, one of the things we did look at is like you did pass your resolution to utilize the three year average for some revenue items, but you chose not to use it for all of them, which is where the auditors would come in on the conservative side and say, that's the right thing to do. You used it in the areas where the rebound more than likely will pick back up again and not in the areas where you were getting a little too risky. Uh, Madison has phenomenally done a, a wonderful job, probably one of the best of all of our clients in transparency. You've given more information to your residents all up throughout this whole process. Very much in, um, explanation has gone out on everything that you've done. And you continue to forward think on a lot of these things. Um, one of your residents spoke earlier about the plans that you had when you structured your fund balance and you structured capital. Yeah, this is the probably the area that you did have to take a little bit of a haircut on this year just to make this work. And you know, you want to be able to say we're going to rebound and put that capital back to where it was, because as we remember several years ago, we had taken from capital, taken from capital, and you needed to put bring that back. Um, the budget that you do have presented in front of you, I did want to highlight that you're still over a million dollars below your appropriations cap, and you're about $53,000 even with the 2% increase above your below your tax levy cap, nor are you utilizing the additional $793,000 in your cap bank, in your tax levy cap bank. So there, and so when I look at those items, you are not dipping too far down. Um, and I feel that there's nothing in this budget that will negatively impact you. And I feel that you're um, riding out yet in this pandemic and we're not really sure where it was gonna be and where we will fall in 2021. Um, like Jim highlighted and I, you know, on that 
the federal funding, it is wonderful, but there are some clear cut things that we know the monies can't be spent on. Property tax and pension are too clear as a bell in that ruling on the federal stimulus. That money is really not it's more of a stimulus. That package is a stimulus package. They want you to encourage to stimulate your economy, not solve problems of future of past budget mistakes. So as a result, that guidance isn't out yet. And hopefully you'll be able to do that to fulfill certain things that you need to do going forward, not as a look back revenue source. If you have any questions, I'm still on the line to answer any questions. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Val, very helpful. We'll go through a couple more slides, Mayor, and then um, we can finish up with questions if that's okay. So uh, I, I uh, Carrie down in the clerk's office always says, you know, maybe you have to put the tough stuff in the middle, but make it a sandwich and end with something nice. Um, so I want to uh, go to the next slide, Michael, and, and remind people, residents again that, um, you know, we've had a very modest tax increase on the municipal side of only 4%. The municipal budget only counts for 21.8% of the total tax bill that you get. If you go to the next slide, um, this is a slide that's been presented other times. Uh, the average home, which has an assessed value of 667, 200, it's a nice little center hall colonial on Green Village Road, um, is uh, going to be um, paying municipal taxes of 29,000, or they did pay 29 or $2,900, and there's some decimal point error on my, on my math there, but um, they paid $2,915 in uh, 2020. And for, for that $2,900, they got all those services, fire department, police department, garbage, yard waste, senior, sewage, health, thank goodness for the health department this year. Um, fire hydrants and street lights are something that we get for free because our utilities pay for it. Other towns actually have to pay per street light for the electric utility. All these items they get, a 2% tax increase on this particular home represents a $4.20 per month increase in their municipal property taxes. So uh, it's a relatively small amount. I think it's important and I think it's prudent to do it. Um, the biggest concern we have are the tax appeals and, uh, and, um, and that's it. So I'll uh, obviously sit back and answer any questions that I can have. One thing I would like to say just to open, um, Tom Harrell and has talked about the open space budget. That's not a budget that we actually vote on here. Open space is presented in, in terms of the uh, activity for the prior year and the potential activity for 2021. Projects are listed, but each individual project gets voted on via ordinance when council determines to appropriate that money. So this budget does not include the open space, um, historic preservation and recreation trust fund budget. It just, um, during our budget hearings, we present that information to council as an FYI. And plus we'll have, in addition to one project or recommended and the council discusses those, we do periodic periodic updates as to where we are. So um, I'll just pick off the uh, comments and questions and just say Jim, excellent presentation. Um, and Val, thank you for your input, especially your ability to uh, compare it to other municipalities. It is a um, honor to be a, a mayor in such a well-run town where we can have these discussions as opposed to um, should we bond to pay, pay the, the bills that are backing up and, uh, and uh, other discussions that are happening. Um, if my memory serves me well, as I shared the, um, my opening comments from a year ago, you know, I, I, I do remember in the um, conversations, you know, in Good old days of before uh, pandemic and of uh, January, February, we were looking at a 2% increase last year. We um, shaved that to 1%, but I think uh, Jim kept on saying, this is the impact you're gonna have by just going down 1%. You're, you're gonna be almost committed, you're, you're gonna be committed to a 2% for next year. And, and so this is in a way is no surprise. And um, what is a surprise is how impactful this pandemic has been on Madison, but our ability to handle it, but our, we must look forward to many years of um, making sure we do the right thing. I, my Early in my council career, I remember having to vote on a budget that had a substantial increase and that uh, is not where we ever wanna be. Um, other comments or questions? 
Uh, Austri. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, I, you know, I, I had written some notes down, but I mean, Jim's presentation covers everything that I wanted to say. Um, and uh, I feel like we're being very responsible uh, with a 2% um, tax increase. And we're covering all our services. We aren't like other towns surrounding uh, that have to now borrow dollars to uh, cover their operating costs. We have the opportunity when the federal stimulus money comes to put that towards a project. We have a very significant project, our sewage treatment plant expansion, where those dollars, and that's where the appropriate place is, you use a one-time infusion of money into a capital project, and then you, you clear up you know, dollars uh, that we do have and direct it towards our, our operating budget. So you know, we're in a really good position because we, have managed our sur surplus supplies well, and we haven't overdone uh, it with the, the surplus so that we put ourselves in a position where uh, we have to raise our taxes in, in a very, um, uh, very uh, you know, active manner where we raise them very high, like as Bob mentioned many years ago, we did have to. So I think this is a very good budget and a reasonable budget. I just want to say that's one of my biggest concerns is that we do zero, 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 when you have to do an 8%. I'd much rather do 2%. Maybe next year we can do 2% and, and do it in a gradual way. Um, the rating agencies would really frown upon it, and it's just not the right way to, the right way to go about it. Thank you. Uh, uh, Deb? So you answered most of mine, just a couple of questions, and I'm actually going to go in reverse order and start with the questions and then my comment. Um, just for clarification on slide 13, um, I'm sorry, slide, slide 12, the court health um, and construction um, on, yeah, that one, mm -hmm. <laughs> I think. That's um, our portion of the costs for those three departments after the shared services. So we take in more for the court, but that's what we get as the actual appropriation. Correct for court and health um, construction is the, the whole enchilada and then the revenue just comes in um, on a different revenue line. I don't net it out for, um, uh, for, for construction because it's, we're not actually getting a payment from Chatham. We're just receiving their fees. Fees, Where Got it. in, um, uh, in the, the court, we're actually receiving monies from the various towns to run the court. So I, I, I net that number on here. You're correct. Um, and then on slide 11, I just wanted to say thank you for reaching out to Danielle at the schools just to find out and make sure I know we've been working on working together with them and, and trying to make sure everybody's on the same page as much as we can with all the differences. Um, so that's appreciated. And then my last um, comment question, I guess, is on slide six, and you and I have talked about this um several times and I just want to make sure people realize these three revenues are not the only ones that are down um, and Jim and I went back and forth and he had to pick and choose as far as <laughs> this could have gone on and on. Mm -hmm. um, but as a reminder, with the parking permits that are paid, we did reduce that for people that were permit holders, I believe, and Jim or Bob, you can correct me if I'm wrong, um, by half for this year. So if you had a permit last year, we reduced your fee for this year and are only charging full fees. We don't have those numbers of how many permits are even being asked for but that's going to be a revenue loss just by the fact that people will be paying less. So there's lots more revenues that are down other than those three. Um, and I appreciate that you couldn't, <laughs> you would have had 18 slides just on, on revenues coming down. So I, I appreciate, yeah. you know, you picked three of the big ones that people could understand and were clear to understand. And, and I, I appreciate all to, your work and I questions and to, conversations. It, it, to, to point this out, these are the daily parking revenues. Um, we, we book them separately between the permits and the daily parking, the $5 per so. And Deb, you're 100% right. There's many other lines that are down, but I just wanted to show these because we've been talking about them. That was all. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Bob? Um, I guess that's really just three general comments. Uh, when Jim was showing the small property tax increases dating back, I believe, from 2014 to current, um, what we didn't talk about, but what I think is very important is during that period, we had the October snowstorm. 
Hurricane Irene, and Hurricane Sandy. This town was able to weather those costs without borrowing a dime, without having to go to the bond market to fund anything, and yet take into account very low tax increases like that. In addition, we maintained our AAA rating. So to me, this budget represents what's historically been Madison. Good conservative approaches today, doing what's best for the residents today, but also planning for the future. One thing that I will comment on right now is um, the tax appeals, which is something I do for a living. I think there's tremendous exposure there. So I definitely think that 2% is warranted. Um, I think we have to keep a good eye on that bucket, but I do fully support this budget. I think it's right in line with the way Madison has and always will do uh, its budgets. Uh, Maureen? You're on mute there. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to call attention to slide 18 again, the list of concerns. Going forward, we're down a million dollars. It's We don't know where it's going to come back. We've got affordable housing. We've got debt payments for the sewage treatment plants. We've got a lot of things coming up that, that's, that, that we, we could put those um, stimulus money towards. And... Uh, I mean, we wouldn't wouldn't be hard pressed to use the funds. So um, I think we've 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 we've, we've got to be. I think the two percent is is a responsible way of of um, covering our bases. Uh, Rachel, thank you, Jim. I want to just add um, my appreciation to what many residents and fellow council members have said tonight, which is that your attention to really teaching us all uh, year after year, and then each year, you know, six, eight times in the budget season about how the numbers come together and what they all mean is so admirable. And I think uh, your ability to take these numbers and make them understandable, uh, turn them into a narrative that we can understand how they impact our lives and, and the services that we pay for and, and the uh, capital that we invest in, the capital projects we invest in, just shows a real commitment to communication and transparency that I think makes Madison a model uh, for the state, frankly, in terms of the amount of information that's provided and the special care that you take to explain it to us um, in these great presentations. I've been able to point people in other towns to the Rosenet uh, annual budget at a glance page, which includes links to every presentation. And I just think um, that no one can claim in seriousness that we have a lack of transparency, um, given the great presentations that you've made this year and in previous years. We talked a little bit about um, the surplus, which I understand we, we are striving to, to rename the fund balance, which is the correct term. Um, it's hard to, to shake that term surplus because it's become um, just a, a real buzzword in our uh, municipal and political talk here. But I think it's important to highlight the moves that were made last year in 2020 to bring the fund balance of the surplus down. Last year, we um, used $1 million of our water surplus to fund the water meter project that is gonna go forward hopefully this year after a short delay, hopefully, uh, not, not a lengthy one um, due to the pandemic. We, um, we trimmed certain budget lines last year and utilized more surplus in the budget as revenue. And we increased the anticipated revenues, which reduces surplus generation by saying that we expect to make more money in 2020. Therefore, there'll be less surplus that is unexpected revenue that comes in above and beyond what we anticipated. Clearly things could not have gone you know, more differently. In fact, our revenues dropped significantly. And then I think the thing that many of us has touched, have touched on is that appropriating for just one extraordinary project, like um, needing to um, fund a significant portion of the municipally sponsored affordable housing project or the $1.5 million radio, radio system that's coming up for our combined public safety and utility um, departments to use would be, um, you know, it, it would bring our surplus down dramatically 
but I think we have, we're looking at a windfall here with this $1.7 million. And that would be such just a, a brilliant stroke if we could take that 1.7 and put it towards the radio system or put it towards um, our $9 million uh, sewage treatment uh, upgrade project, which is gonna cost us $300,000 a year for 30 years. So I think there's also a nice symmetry though, when we talk about that $300,000 a year for debt service for the sewage treatment upgrade, um, that is approximately equal to what this 2% tax increase would generate. And even without any of the uh, financial unknowns that you've talked about tonight, um, and in previous meetings, we know we're already on the hook for the sewage treatment plant upgrade. We need to expand capacity of the sewage treatment plant, which is nearing capacity already. Um, if we have any potential development in either um, in, in Chatham or in Madison, um, we will be maxed out on sewage treatment. Um, we need to make repairs to aging equipment. Some items you only have one of, and if they go down, we are in big trouble. Um, we, don't want to have a backup or an overflow at the sewage treatment plant. And we need to meet new DEP requirements where we need to move, remove more phosphorus from the outflow to our watershed to avoid problems like what happened to Lake Patcom where they had this blue green algae growth last year due to all the fertilizer and phosphorus in their storm outflow. So this is already on the books. We are upgrading the sewage system. It's gonna cost us $300,000 a year. This 2% tax increase covers the cost to flush our toilets. I mean, we need to be realistic here and dispel the notion that municipal taxes exist outside of the financial world where costs go up year upon year. You mentioned the pension costs increasing 36%, garbage hauling increased 20%. We need to upgrade our sewage treatment plant to the tune of $9 million and artificially depressing a perceived cost to the borough by keeping uh, a tax increase to 0% is just gonna to lead to sticker shock and untold outrage, which you know we all wanna avoid as elected officials and prudent administrators. So I think when we look, I mean, setting aside the unknowns, which are scary enough, we already know we have significant costs that we will be facing um, immediately and in the years to come. And this 2% tax increase, which you've demonstrated is quite modest um, relative to the total tax bill and relative to a, a monthly payment of approximately $4 for a home of an average value of $667,000 in the borough is a reasonable way and, a, and frankly a prudent way to address the, uh, our financial picture. So I thank you for making a really compelling um, presentation that helped us understand this all better. And um, I look forward in the next, I guess, 28 days we have on the calendar to um, ironing out any, you know, additional questions that come up, but I think you're in really good shape and um, I'm looking forward to, to bringing this up and uh, not adopting it tonight, but to, what's the verb? What are we doing? Introduction. Here? We're introducing the budget tonight. Introduction. And I want to thank you for getting us to this point. Mayor, I would just add a couple of comments if I could. Um, this budget has a million dollar reduction in the amount of money we're putting towards the capital projects and capital improvement fund. So that's going to be a concern down the road. How can we get it back to the $3.8 million that we had in 2019? We're at $2.8 million now. So that is a concern. If we were to do zeros, there would be no way we could ever get that dollar amount back up to um, in any sort of um, logical or appropriate way. The second thing is um, there was discussion about us having ample reserves and uh, I explained it at the last council meeting, Councilman Landrigan mentioned it. Uh, tax appeals are going to be, have a tremendous impact, not only on the revenue, but on our tax appeal reserve. We have $600,000 in our tax appeal reserve. And when we have to pay out an award, when someone wins a tax appeal, we have to pay it out for the schools, for the county, and for us. And I can tell you that $600,000 is not a lot of money. The office buildings in Madison pay $6 million in taxes. So if they get a 10% reduction in their taxes and they win those tax appeals and they have multiple years of them, that money will all be gone. 
So uh, there's there's lots of reasons to be thinking that a lot of our reserves are going to be dropped. Thank you, Jim. And just to reinforce uh, Rachel's re opening comments and other comments about your thorough work, I uh, as I often have a chance to do, I talk to uh, mayors and council members and. Uh, many different towns and I was talking to this one person in particular and uh, saying, you know, what, what are you looking at um, for uh, uh, your next year's budget? And the answer was, and this was within the last two weeks, I'm not sure the, the it's still in committee. It, has, it hasn't come to the council yet. And you look at how many, how much time uh, this body has spent on it and how much information you put it there. So um, I just, it was, it was a way to say, thank you very much. Um, any other comments or questions? I, I, I think what I've heard, and uh, the council can correct me otherwise, is the consensus that this uh, the introduction will uh, be on the budget as Jim has presented and with the document that was shared earlier today. So uh, with that, I would ask the uh, clerk to read the, um, the statement. Liz, you there? Did you lose Liz? I hit the, I hit the wrong button. Oh, there she is. Okay. This Thank way. you, Liz. I was a little worried. Uh, I'm reading and calling the roll, and no one's answering me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, Resolution 89, 2021, Resolution of the Borough of Madison adopting the 2021 budget and tax resolution. That's the title. The yep. and, and you need to re read the uh, statement. Oh, yes. Upon introduction and adoption, the 2021 budget and tax resolution will be published by summary in the Madison Eagle on March the 25th, 2021, with a public hearing date set for Monday, April the 26th, 2021, at 8 p.m. via teleconference, at which time and place all interested individuals will have an opportunity to be heard. There will be consideration for final adoption. A copy of the budget as introduced will be filed in the Madison Public Library and the County Library and posted on the borough's website for public review. Mayor, I move uh, resolution 89-2021. Second. Any further discussion? Roll call vote, please. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Byrne? Yes. Mr. Hoover? Yes. Ms. Cohen? Yes. Ms. Ehrlich? Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. All right, thank you. And again, we'll have the hearing at the end of April, April 26th. Um, on to the next agenda item, communications and petitions. Uh, yes, Mayor. Mayor and Council received two items, an email dated March 9th from uh, resident David Steckety regarding resolution 87, uh, 2021 and an email dated March 18th from resident Krista Klein uh, regarding the recent anti-Asian attacks in Atlanta, Georgia and signs, uh, thin blue line signs at local businesses downtown. Thank, thank you very much. And um, we'll go on to agenda discussions. This is probably a fairly brief one. This is the uh, revised bylaws. It's been under, uh, way for uh, multiple years. Uh, Mayor Bruce Harris and I started with this a couple years ago, so we're finally bringing it to the finish line. The joint meeting approved the uh, by bylaws as proposed and with uh, minor corrections that were to be done, Dist distributed the copy of the final version earlier today. So we'll be looking for uh, council uh, approval of bylaws under resolution 97. Any uh, further discussion or questions? All right, uh, before we go on to uh, ordinance of a hearing um, and any people that are attending the meeting and uh, here probably have seen this pop up on your uh, screens that um, a shooting in a supermarket in Bold Boulder, Colorado. Um, obviously it is early. Um, we don't know whether it was targeted or what the story behind it is. We do know that one police officer was killed. We know that no matter where a shooting happens, we identify to with any person that uh, was killed and murdered. We feel it personally as a connection, and um, at our hearts and thoughts go out to the families 
who will be affected by the shooting in Boulder, Colorado, the, the family of the police officer who went to work today to protect those in Boulder, Colorado and is not coming home. And our thoughts go to all those who wear the uniform across this country to protect. Uh, with that, we will move on to ordinance for hearing. Uh, will the clerk please read the statement? The ordinance schedule for hearing was introduced by title and passed on a first reading at the regular meeting of council held on March 8th, 2021, was posted and filed according to law, and copies were made available to the general public requesting same. I call up ordinance 12-2021 for second reading. I ask the clerk to read said ordinance by title. Ordinance of the Borough of Madison amending chapter 166 of the Borough Code entitled Streets and Sidewalks to amend the Sidewalk Reimbursement Program. I open the hearing to anyone in the public that wishes to comment on this ordinance. Um, and uh, Dennis, you have your hand up. Is that for this ordinance? If so, you may comment, but if it's to a general comment, uh, we can, we'll get you later. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. No, I have it up, but it's not for this general ordinance. I All will right. wait until later. Very good. Thank yep. Thank you. Seeing no one else, I close the hearing. Mayor, I move ordinance uh, 12 there's 2021. Second. And council discussion. Uh, Rachel. I just like to uh, lend my support to this. I think, you know, one thing we've all learned and, and you hearkened back to mayor in your opening comments about how we've all been spending more time outside walking and enjoying the streets of Madison in the last year. Uh, I think this is a really admirable way to um, incentivize and encourage residents to improve their sidewalks, to improve uh, safety and accessibility throughout town, something that all of us are paying a lot more attention to now. And um, I'm glad that the borough is making this move to uh, essentially fund a public-private partnership to improve sidewalk conditions throughout the borough. Thank you. And to, uh, for everyone to understand, this not only increases the amount of the share that the borough does, but it puts in place an adjustable uh, share so that we're, we're not trying to catch up with uh, prices that have not changed. Any other comments? Roll call vote, please. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Ms. Byrne? Ms. Byrne? Yes. Mr. Hoover? Yes. Ms. Cohen? Yes. Ms. Ehrlich? Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. And let's see if I can do this by memory here. It's, uh, we'll sit on the. Uh, uh, I declare ordinance 12 2021 uh, passed in. Uh, Finally approved, and I ask the clerk to publish notice thereof in the newspaper and file the ordinance according to the law. All right. And now we go on to our second of two invitations for uh, discussions. And uh, the same rules apply, uh, except for now you may comment on any topic. Again, try to keep your comments to three minutes, but we will give you a one minute grace period and uh, stop you at four. You only get to uh, comment one time. And uh, so if you're interested in speaking, please uh, ra raise your hand. And so we don't close it before uh, you had your chance. And with that, uh, Dennis Schreiber. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and, and council again. Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak. Um, I've always admired Jim's presentations because I think they're very detailed and I think they're very good, but they still raise a lot of issues. And I know Jim mentioned Mike my responded to my comments specifically that uh, things had been cut. But I'd like to know, really, Jim, are there headcount reductions going on or being considered? Because if we're going to share the pain that uh, you have described that we're about to face, I think we all should share the pain, not only just property taxpayers, but everybody, you know? Why not? It hurts, but it has, it has to be done. Secondly, I know you said you did cap, cut millions from the capital budget, and I think that's great, and you're to be commended for that. But let's keep going. And please tell me you got rid of those bump outs, please. That I'll save you $300,000 right there if you eliminate those. Uh, and my final comment, and I, and, I don't, and I don't mean this in a joking way, but listening to fellow Madison residents comment previously, 
about how wonderful it is to pay more in taxes because everything is great here. Yeah, everything is pretty good. It's a, it's a well-run town. However, you get to a certain point when people don't want to pay any more taxes. And to those, my fellow uh, Madison residents, who I will not name by name, Mr. Mayor, because you admonished me, if anyone wants to pay my incremental taxes on that side of the aisle, they're more than welcome to do it. I'll be happy to let them pay my incremental taxes. I think we can keep taxes low. Please don't tell me you're going to raise the water budget rates. And who knows what the school board is going to do because you as the council have no control over that. But there's a whole lot of hurt coming our way. And if you want to keep this town a viable, attractive place to live, you will cut the expenses and not raise taxes. Thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity to speak with you all. Thank you, Dennis. And now, uh, Matt Keen. Hi, Mayor, can you hear me? Uh, yes. All right, great. Thanks very much, Hi, Council. I just want to say thanks very much for moving forward. Uh, name, name, yeah. name and address. Alma yeah. Avenue, sorry. Matt Keen, Alma Avenue, Madison. I volunteer for the fire department and I was just on here uh, two weeks ago and I just wanted to follow up with it. Thanks for moving forward with the hiring list. And I wanted to follow it up specifically with a question. When we've been talking about the services that have been provided for the town of Madison over the years, we've always been at a staffing level of 14 career firefighters for the past 20 years. I know the council gave indication to moving forward with hiring one. I wanted to see what your intention was to actually hire two to bring us back to the current staffing level or to the levels that we've been at for the past 20 years of 14 career paid firefighters. And I was wondering if you could speak to that point, whether it be now or at some point hiring the second firefighter. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, we'll, we'll be, as, as mentioned, uh, we were getting ready to move forward with the one vacancy and um, we'll be looking closely and at uh, staffing levels of the fire department. And, you know, the goal is to keep uh, Madison safe and keep us the number one community to live in the, in the state. And uh, I think we're all together with that one. Um, and now uh, Christine Boyle. Hello again. My name is Christine Boyle and I live at 9 Buckingham Drive. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to repeat that. Uh, first, you are, thank you. Okay, thank you. Sorry if I missed that. Uh, first, I would like to say thank you to Jim Redette for such a clear presentation. Second, I've heard comments about not wanting to pay more taxes, but I, sh but I think it's important that we not be penny wise and pound foolish here. It is clear with rising costs that we need a prudent increase in order to meet our obligations. If we do not generate enough income to meet the recurring expenses, we risk having to borrow. Borrowed money further increases the cost of these purchases for all of us because then we will pay interest on that money. And if we have to borrow at that time, there's there's you know there's there's no place else to go. And we're going to pay those fees. Uh, for you know, for example, to increase the cost of our road repairs. This will lead to larger future tax increases if we're going to continue to take care of the maintenance of our town. Further on that point. If we budget poorly, as uh, Jim pointed out in his presentation, our credit rating will be lowered from its current top shelf AAA rating. We will further increase the need for larger future increases in our taxes. All of this leads to much higher costs in the future. It's better to deal with it incrementally now to protect ourselves in the future from having to take out expensive debt. No one is saying they like to increase their individual household outflows. What I think is true is that we can appreciate what our purchasing power buys us with our municipal taxes, where among other things, we don't get nickel and dimed on service costs for garbage removal, leaf removal, or sewage. We have beautiful open spaces that will always need maintenance, which costs money. Our roads are maintained, and we have crossing guards to help ensure the safety of our children in this lovely walking town. I could go on and on, but I know everyone wants to go home tonight. Again, thank you all for your time. Thank you, Christine, and uh, thank you for uh, mentioning the crossing guards that um, Madison employs more, more crossing guards than I think every neighboring town combined because of our commitment to helping children get, get to school safely. Uh, George Hadook. State name and address, and state your, start your comments. Uh, George Hadook, uh, Surrey Lane. I, I would just like a more definitive answer with regard to 
uh, hiring the two uh, paid career firefighters. Uh, I think before you said that you were moving quickly on it. Can you give us a timeline as to what moving quickly means uh, as far as testing, interview, appointment, hiring, and actual appointment? And, and also, I just want to throw in, you, you, you mentioned uh, before that something to the effect that Madison is the number one place in New Jersey to live. And I think it came out this week that we were ranked number 48. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. And um, the, the timing is, um, you know, step one, as you know, is the uh, updating the list and then the, the process of uh, going through hiring. So it, it's not gonna be overnight, but uh, we will, um, you know, the resolution is on the consent agenda and we can participate that at least it's approved and the chief will start moving forward. Uh, Tom Hiram Putis. Hello again, Mayor and Council. Tom Harlan Putis, 27 Pomeroy Road. Uh, thanks for allowing me to speak before, and then we got a lot of good answers from the Jim Burnett's presentation and the council people who also commented. Um, I wanted to ask you, Mayor, and hopefully you can answer this today. When do you believe we're going to start having in person meetings again? Uh, this is a very good format for the considering the situation that we've been in for the last 12 months, but if there's a way for us to go out in public now and the school children to return to school, there should be a way for you to maneuver to get the residents back in front of all the council safely in your uh, council room. Or if you need a bigger space, you have other uh, public buildings in the borough where you could host the meeting. I, I think that's kind of important. Hopefully you, you guys agree. And I, and I don't know the timeline. I just wanted to ask you about that. Um, uh, the other thing I wanted to ask about is, so you said that the open space, um, open space uh, tax uh, monies, what the, the budget is just, uh, comes from the open space committee. And then you vote on certain things that they bring to you. So they did bring to you one, uh, item which you voted on the last meeting, which was the Masonic Lodge project. And you appropriated, I think, approximately $12,000 for some kind of architectural plans. And it was discussed briefly what might be the possibilities, but there was no real elaborate uh, plan. What would that be used for? We already have a public meeting place that we have at Kings Road and New Rose Hall. For now, we still have the community center, which if it, if it does follow, go through with redevelopment for public housing and uh, affordable housing, that will go away. But until that happens, there's potential to use a lot of the money from open space for the Masonic Lodge, which in a good times, it, it might be very a good, a good project to take on since you said it's a historic building, but I'm not really sure now what's the objective. So if somebody could elaborate on that, tonight. I'd, I'd appreciate hearing about that too. Uh, and that's about it. Thanks again, everybody, for your time. I know it's a stressful stressful period when you're working on the budgets, especially during this COVID situation. Sorry, I'm having trouble with my mute button. Thank, thank you, Tom. Um, on the uh, meetings, um, yeah, we, we, we will be discussing uh, and we're actually appointing our technology committee. And one of the things they, they are to be tasked uh, with is the uh, timing of coming back in person. I have to say, I, this is not a virtual background behind me. I am actually sitting in the council chambers and this has been very lonely. So I'm looking forward to having uh, smiling faces out in front uh, in the near future. Uh, the Masonic Lodge, um, the, the, the primary discussions and what we're working with partnering and we anticipate uh, applications going to uh, state historic trust and also the county historic trust is saving a, a classic building, the oldest church building is no longer a church, but the oldest church building in Madison. So that is a number one, but in order to make that happen, it has to be open to the public. And so it would not only, you know, similar to, um, the, the James Library that uh, we were able to 
obviously that was a borough property, but that is a building that's open to the public and so people get to enjoy that great historic building on a regular basis. And so um, the uh, all with Masonic Lodge would be do the same thing in a um, major partnership. And uh, we'll bring up uh, Kathy Bailey. Kathy, you're, you're there. It looks like you're muted. Sorry, I thought I had already unmuted. Kathy Daly, Western Avenue. Um, just a couple of points. First of all, I know I had requested that you read um, resolution 89 into the uh, for all of us to hear. And I, I admittedly, I stepped away for a minute or two, but I don't think it was read. Um, so I don't know exactly what you've passed there. Um, but also another comment I wanted to make was uh, some of the other Madison residents who spoke talked about the hard decisions and the tough choices that you made in the budget this year. And I've, I've listened to many of your budget presentations and I'm really hard pressed to find any difficult decisions that you've made in the budget. I mean, even last year, none of our borough employees have lost their jobs. Uh, nobody was furloughed. Uh, no cuts to personnel, no cuts to hours, uh, very, and really not that much cut from the, uh, the capital budget. Um, you know, the households in, in town, people have actually faced furloughs. In my own household, we've had furloughs. Uh, people had their, have lost their jobs. People have lost their businesses. And, um, and I'm not saying that the borough should cut people or the borough should cut personnel or the should cut hours, um, but we only dipped into our surpluses at the rate of about five or 6% in a historic pandemic year. That means we still have 95% of, of the money we were saving for a rainy day. And unless somebody shows me otherwise, that is the, those are the numbers that I'm working on based on uh, what, what I've seen and, and and tracked over the years that I've been um, paying attention to the budget. So I, I really don't see that the borough has tightened its belts in any way. And then to, to, on top of not having tightened our belts, to be asking people for a, a tax increase, I, I just don't think it's justified. Um, and I haven't seen anything today or over the past three months to convince me otherwise. Um, thank you for your time, and I, I would appreciate if, if anybody would reach out to me and show me that, that what I'm saying is not the case. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. The, the, the actual resolution was not read into the record as uh, you might not have caught that. The, um, because it's, it's an actual document, the uh, document that it's filed and will be posted. So it was authorized in the filing and posting. So that, that will be uh, put out there. Um, there were a couple of comments related to headcounts. And I, I think the what one of the things that this budget is an example of is the, the work that is done over a uh, multi-year time so that you don't have to make drastic decisions in a, in a um, stressful time. And so the, the headcount, virtually across the border, the borough is lower than it was a decade ago. Um, and so uh, the goal was to you know, create a headcount that delivers services and uh, do, do not go below that. We've also heard the comments related to uh, the proper number of firefighters. So this is a constant bat battle, whether it's uh, fire, police, EPW, or any other department. So appreciate your comments on that. Now we'll bring up Pat Rowe. I think I'm unmuted now, Mr. Mayor. You are, you are good. Pat Rowe, 25 Pine Avenue again. Uh, thank you very much. I will look forward to actually looking at the information in the budget in more detail. I did have a few comments, though, based on what I did here tonight. The first is I actually think you guys should put together a resolution asking our, um, our congresswoman, our senators, our governor, and other legislatures to really help you out, because I don't understand how this American Rescue Plan is helping Madison in 2021. 
it sounds like all the money is going to be available at best in 2022, 23, 24. Um, we're borrowing $1.9 trillion as a country, and this is going to do nothing for us this year, according to what I heard tonight. Um, although I did have one thought, and I think Jim would have to discuss this with Valerie. Um, if we are allowed to use the money for the capital programs this year, when the money does come in, um, and money being fungible and the way we shift money around between all our accounts, it, it almost seems like we could possibly free up some money that we've currently budgeted for the capital budget to use to reduce the current tax rate. And when the money from the federal government does come in and we're allowed to use it for a, a capital item, plug it back into that. Because as a follow-on to that, some of the things that were mentioned tonight about using the money for some capital programs that are going to have a very long lifespan, like the, the sewage improvements, which I did vote for when I was on council, um, I really think it is the worst use of stimulus money to try to pay down uh, or, or, or avoid taking on debt for that. I know we're very adverse to debt, but if you're trying to push money into the economy now, it's just slightly better than putting the money into our bank account and then using the interest every year to help lower the tax rate. Um, I think, again, if, if the, the guidance from the government is to try to use the money as quickly as possible, using it to avoid long-term debt that we had anticipated anticipated taking on is not a good idea. Uh, a couple other notes. Um, Councilman Landrigan did mention some of the disasters that happened since 2014. I actually believe if you go back and look historically, they actually happened before 2014. And if you go back and look historically, the surpluses that we had at those times was significantly um, lower than it is today. And we were able to weather those storms. Um, and in terms of transparency, you know, I've asked for the last two years for all the surplus accounts the capital accounts, the, the general accounts, and our reserve accounts to be, you know, forthcoming to during the budget process so we as a community can truly evaluate how much money the borough does have on hand. Um, Jim even referenced some of that tonight in terms of the, the accounts being drawn down, but I still have not seen some of those numbers presented to the general public. Uh, so I would hope that we'd be able to get those as we go forward before we see the final um, budget for approval. The final thing I'm going to note, or two things I'm going to note is, you know, we talked about how much or how little taxes have gone up since 2014. But the one thing that we keep forgetting to tell people is that because we forgo, forgave a massive electricity cut that we could have seen since 2014 when the cost of our electricity to Madison uh, started going down and has gone down significantly over the last six plus years now. So one of the things I did ask for when I was in council is not just showing what we pay in terms of property taxes relative to other towns, but what we spend relative to other towns and see how we really stack up then, because we've been using a lot of the money from the electric utility to sort of paper over the increases in our budget. Um, and finally, in terms of timing, I understand what the state guidelines are, but I know that every year I see plenty of towns that do not pass their budgets until the summertime. And I understand that it's not ideal. I understand that they might ding you one point on one of your, your scorecards, but again, I still think that having more information and having a better understanding of how the money that's coming from the federal government can be spent outweighs any downside to, um, to deferring voting on a final budget until we have better information. And as Jim said, I'm not quite sure that's going to happen before the end of April. So I would still recommend that we strongly consider pushing that final, um, final approval back. And thank time. you very much, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Yep, thank you. Pat. And Maria Slaybaugh. Uh, Maria Slaybaugh, 28 Stafford Drive. Apologies for making a long meeting a little bit longer, but I just wanted to comment that um, I failed to see how anyone could reasonably see this budget presentation and hear the various questions from council members and the detailed answers and see the challenges faced in putting forth a sensible budget in these uncertain times and not feel good about the recommendations being made in this budget with its modest increase. As a Republican, I know even said, this is a well-run town and I couldn't agree more. So thank you. That's all. Thank you. And seeing no other hands raised, I hereby close this part of the meeting and we go on. There are no ordinances for introduction. So will the clerk please read the uh, council, the consent agenda uh, statement. My tongue is not working anymore. Intent agenda resolutions will be enacted with a single motion. Any resolution requiring expenditure is supported by a certification of availability of funds. Any resolution requiring discussion will be removed from the consent agenda. 
All resolutions will be reflected in full in the minutes. Mayor, I move resolution 90-2021 through resolution 101-2021. Second. Any discussion or any of that need to be pulled? Roll call vote, please. Ms. Bailey. Um, I will vote um, for resolutions 90 through uh, 100 and abstain from 101. Okay, Ms. Byrne. Yes. Mr. Hoover. Yes. Ms. Cohen. Ms. Ehrlich. Yes. Mr. Landrigan. Yes. And in case the uh, public didn't catch that, uh, Ms. Cohen was having trouble with the microphone, but she uh, nodded yes, so it was unanimous. You got it. Uh, there is no uh, unfinished business. Uh, approval of vouchers. Will the clerk please read the voucher totals? And we lost the. Uh... Oh, you're muted. Oh, I'm sorry. Here we go again. Um, for the current fund, $3,943,001.71. For the general capital fund, $16,793.03. For the electric operating fund, $52,167.10. The water operating fund, $4,200. $27.44 for the water capital fund, $10,200, and for the trust, $353.50. The total is $4,026,742.78. Mayor, I move approval of the vouchers. Second. Any discussion? Roll call vote, please. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Ms. Byrne? Yes. Mr. Hoover? Yes. Ms. Cohen? Yes. Ms. Ehrlich? Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. All right, under new business, I'd like to uh, take the following appointment and requesting council confirmation. This is for our technology task force. These are all term through December 31st, 2021. Uh, Mayor Robert Conley, Councilwoman Deborah Cohen, Borough Administrator Ray Cody, CFO and Assistant Borough Administrator Jim Burnett, IT Director Jim Sanderson, Resident Claudine Bertie, Resident Eric Range, and um, Communication and IT Coordinator Michael Pelessier. Mayor, I move uh, approval of uh, the uh, Technology Task Force. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. And uh, Bob, it's great to have you back. So you can May do the I duties. Hope that we adjourn. All in favor? Bye. Bye. Thank you Bye. all, and thank you for the uh, public that uh, joined us tonight to share your comments. Well, be well.